Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the video notes for Chapter 3, Section 5 in your geometry book. I am still uncertain exactly how many videos this section will be made up of, as I am still considering exactly how much material from this section we are going to be covering. So, um, this section is going to take the information that we have developed over the first two sections of the chapter, 3.1 and 3.2, and it is actually going to discuss how we can use those properties and those vocabulary words to prove that lines are parallel. In the first two sections, we have been using these uh, in for this information to find missing angle measures. Now we're going to turn around and go the opposite direction, and instead we'll be able to state which lines are parallel based on these uh, terms and the uh, properties that we already know that they have. To do that, what we do is we look at the converse of each of our um, theorems and postulates from earlier in the chapter, starting with the corresponding angle postulate. Now, the corresponding angle postulate itself said that if two parallel lines are being transversed, then each pair of corresponding angles must be congruent. So remember that a converse is where we take a conditional statement, which is in the form if P then Q, and we switch it around to state if Q then P. So before, our statement said if two lines are parallel, then corresponding angles are congruent. So the converse is going to switch that up, and it's going to say that if two lines are cut by a transversal so that corresponding angles are congruent, then that would mean that those lines must be parallel. Okay, so in the picture we've got four sets of corresponding angles. It doesn't matter which one, but all we need is one set of those angles, for instance angles 1 and 5 to be congruent, and then that would be enough for us to state using this postulate, this converse of a postulate, which is also a postulate, that would be enough for us to state that line M is parallel to line N. So there's a new symbol there. Okay, I know that we haven't seen a lot of this symbol, so again, remember these double lines mean parallel. Okay, and keep in mind that 1 is congruent to 5 could be any of the four pairs. Okay, it doesn't matter which one we have. If we have one set is congruent, that's enough to state that those angles, those lines are parallel. So if one is congruent to five, again, that's a set of corresponding angles. If angle one is congruent to angle five, that's enough to state the lines are parallel. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. So, using this postulate and using a couple of theorems from earlier in the chapter, the vertical angle theorem and the um, linear pair, uh, I'm sorry, the supplement theorem, we would be able to find uh, quite a bit, okay? So, we've got all these rules. Now, there, here's another new postulate. Um, this one is a little bit more uh, rarely used, but it does come up in occasion uh, when we run into it in certain problems. This is called the parallel postulate. This is just another postulate in this section, so I wanted to make sure that it made it into the video. Um, we're not going to use this one very often in proofs, um, but it is handy to have on occasion uh, when we need to create a parallel line and a transversal, or when we need to find the distance between a point and a line. This comes in handy. Um, it states that in a plane, if there exists a line L and a point P that is not on line L, for instance, the picture below, notice we have a, the, the board itself is a plane. Here we have line L and point P that is not on line L. This postulate states that in this plane, there is exactly one line, exactly one line that passes through point P and is parallel to point L. So we'll call that line M when I draw it. What this postulate says is that M is the only line in this plane that contains P and is parallel to L. 
Okay. Now, it's worth noting that if we needed to find the distance between line L and point P, which we may do later in the year pre-AP students, um, the distance between a line and a point is always along the perpendicular line segment to line L that passes through point P. So since I made these lines perfectly horizontal, I can demonstrate this by drawing the vertical line that connects P to line L. This line segment that I've drawn is perpendicular to line L. So we're going to put a point down here and we're going to label it Q. What we're saying is that this distance QP is the distance between point P and line L. So when we find the distance between a point and a line, it is always, always, always the distance along the perpendicular line segment with one endpoint at the point and the other endpoint on the line that is perpendicular to the line. Okay? So that's not really going to come in handy right now, but I want to make sure it made it into these notes because that's what section it is in. Um, now, our corresponding angle postulate, uh, our converse of that, is not the only way that we can prove that two lines are parallel. In fact, using this converse and using some of the other theorems and postulates that we have handy, um, we could actually prove that the converse of every single one of our theorems from section 3-2, every single one of the converses is also true. So we're going to go through those as well and basically establish that we could use the converse of any of those theorems to prove that two lines are parallel. So here we go. All right, so... Um, if we looked at the converse of the alternate exterior angle theorem, we have something that reads very similar to what we've already written for the corresponding angle postulate. If two lines are cut by a transversal so that a pair of alternate exterior angles are, and then we have to think to ourselves, well, what is, that, what, what is the property that goes with alternate exterior? Oh, yeah, they would be congruent. So what this is saying is if we have a pair of congruent alternate exterior angles, that is enough for us to state that the lines are parallel. In other words, if angle 1 is congruent to angle 8, or angle 2 or congruent to angle 7, we'd only need one set, then that would imply that L is parallel to M. Okay? So if we had one set of alternate exterior angles that were congruent, that would be enough to state that the lines are parallel. Uh, same thing for alternate interior angles. If we have a pair of alternate interior angles formed by a transversal, so if two lines are cut by a transversal, so that a pair of alternate interior angles is congruent, that also would be enough to state that the lines are parallel. So if angle 3 was congruent to angle 6 or angle 4 was congruent to angle 5, we only need one set, that is enough for us to state that L is parallel to M. Okay, now those are not the only two theorems that have this property. Our consecutive interior angle theorem also has a converse that is true. It is a little bit different, though, because the property is different. Okay, If two lines are cut by a transversal, so that a pair of consecutive interior angles is not congruent but supplementary, then the lines would be parallel. Okay, Because consecutive interior angles, when we have a set of parallel lines being, con being cut by a transversal like we did in 3.2, they are not congruent. They add up to 180. They are supplementary. So in this picture, if we had a situation where the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 5 was equal to 180 degrees. And that could go for the other set of interior angles, consecutive interior angles as well. If either set of interior angles adds to 180, that is enough for us to state that line L is perpendicular to line M. Okay, that's all we need. All we need is one set. If one set of our angles formed by this transversal have the correct property, that's enough to state that the lines are parallel, parallel using one of these uh, converses. 
The final converse is a very rarely seen one because a lot of books don't bother to name consecutive exterior angles, but the converse of that theorem is true as well if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal so that a pair of consecutive exterior angles are supplementary then that also would be enough to state that the lines are parallel. So in symbols, once again, if the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 7 equals 180 degrees, or the other set, if the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 8 is 180 degrees, either or, that is enough to state that line L is parallel to line M. Okay, so in section 3-2, we identified the, act, the angle pairs, and then we used those to find angle measures that we didn't have. Now, we're going to be doing something the, in the opposite direction. They're going to give us information about an angle pair, and we have to decide whether or not that is enough information to state with support through deductive reasoning that, in fact, there are parallel lines in the picture. So the next video, we'll go through the examples of this. Uh, then there will eventually be a third video that covers proofs, but we are not there yet. So there will be one more video, at least in this series for now. Thank you for your time and attention.